Feature Friday, all my quilting friends. It's so great to have you guys here with me in my quilting studio. Today we are going to do a quilt layout space for an edge-to-edge -edge design on a little quilt top that I threw together out of my stash. And then we are going to actually save it. And then I'm going to turn my robot off. And then we're going to turn the robot back on and we're going to bring the file back up that we had saved. We actually had one of our quilting friends in our Facebook group ask to see this done. And if she had this question, that means other people out there may have this question. So I'm happy to do this video and show you guys how it's done. We're going to turn around right now and look at the quilt top, show you what we're talking about and get started. All right, so here is the quilt top we're working with. This is just a small one. It's not very big. It's just maybe a baby size or a small lap. So we're going to do an edge to edge design across the whole thing. And we're going to lay all that out and then we're going to save it and turn our robot off and then bring it back up so we can stitch it out. And I thought this fabric was adorable. I forgot I had a fat quarter of this little Alice in Wonderland fabric in my stash. So I just chopped it up into squares and matched it with some fabrics that coordinated and threw this together in a day so that I had something to do this on because this is a really important thing to show you guys. We sometimes have to leave our quilting studios to do stuff and can't always be at our machine until our quilt tops are done. So our save features are over here and that is what we're gonna be using today. These guys are really important and I don't know that I've really gone over that with y'all. So we're gonna do that today. Now, we're going to start here on this screen where I am setting my safe area. And usually you guys have come into the video where I've already set my safe area and even put my layout space in. But it's important that you see me set my safe area today because when we save, our robot is actually going to want us to remember a point of origin because that's what we're going to go back to when we turn our machine back on after we've left it. So I'm going to set my safe area, remembering a certain point on my quilt because I'm gonna need that later. So first we're gonna move our machine to the back left corner of our quilting area and press our plus sign for setting our safe area. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but I'm gonna come to a very specific place on my quilt. I actually do a line of stitching to hold my batting down before I put my quilt top on and line that up so I get it nice and square. And I'm coming to the point where I started my stitching on this, and this is gonna be my point of origin, so I remember this. If you don't have a stitching point on your quilt top or your batting or your backing somewhere that you can remember that's gonna be kind of out of the way, um, you can always mark it with a marking pencil or pen or chalk. Just make sure you use something that's gonna come off if it's on the actual fabric of your quilt. I'm all the way out here, so if I wanted to put a mark here, it would be no big deal because this is all gonna get trimmed off, but I'm actually at an edge of a stitching line here. So this is gonna be my point of origin that I have to remember for later. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my plus mark on setting my safe area. We get our next direction to move our machine to the front right corner and press our plus button. So we're gonna take a walk across our frame. I'm gonna bring my machine to the edge of my backing, as close to my roller bar as I can, but I don't wanna hit it because I don't wanna cause any errors. And I'm gonna hit my plus mark here. So now I've set my safe area with my table width and my table height. Now, here's my safe area. I'm still in layout, but I'm gonna add a pattern layout space because I wanna do my quilt top now. So with my quilt top, I'm gonna set the first point of my pattern box as the very tippy top corner of my uh, little quilt top here. So I'm just outside the corner at the top and the side and I'm gonna hit my plus sign. I'm then gonna travel across and do a two point pattern box and just come outside the edge. I'm not coming all the way to my bar because once again, I wanna make sure the robot has plenty of space to move and I don't actually hit my roller bar. 
So I'm gonna come just about here, just outside my edge, and I'm gonna hit my check mark. So now if you look at the screen, you can see I have my safe area and I have my pattern box. And I have my view all boxes button set here, but I can hit my pattern box button here and then we can just look at the pattern box or we can look at our safe area. So I can toggle back and forth between them. I'm gonna stay here in my pattern box and we're gonna add a pattern. So I'm gonna to come to the left-hand side of my display, hit my pattern icon. I get all of my patterns, but I've already planned out what I'm gonna put on this. So I'm gonna come down here to my little white bar and click on it so I get my keyboard. And I'm gonna type in circle because my pattern starts with the word circle. I'm gonna come over here and hit the little green check mark on the keyboard and my pattern is right here. So I'm gonna use this little circle-y pattern. I thought it was kind of appropriate for the other fabrics that I have in my quilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit my check mark. Now that that has loaded, we can kind of see the size of it. It's nice and big, but I've gotta get a couple more repeats in here. And then we're probably gonna to have to work with it a little bit because it is hanging below my pattern box. So when we load a pattern, it automatically goes to edit so that we can work with it and my editing features are here on the right-hand side of my display. The first feature we need to work with is gonna be our repeat feature because I need more of that pattern. So I've highlighted repeat and I've got all of my repeat fun functions down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and have maybe three repeats horizontally. You think that looks good, but as you can see, I'm gonna move this a little bit. My orange box line is here, but I've got design outside of that. So we're gonna have to work with our scaling next to get the design that's out here and that's hanging out the bottom inside of our box. So I'm gonna come over to the right hand side of my display again. This time we're gonna use our scale feature. I'm gonna highlight scale and when I do that we get all of our scaling options on our display. Now I'm gonna use the features that are available to me and I've got this little guy here, I've got my lock, and this is my proportion lock. And it's important for me to use this on this particular design because when I'm scaling this design into this space, I wanna make sure my bubble stays circular. And if you don't do that with proportions and you're not careful, sometimes your bubbles can look a little bit more like ovals. So I'm gonna hit my proportion lock and then I'm gonna let my robot do all of the work for me and I'm gonna hit my auto scale. And now it's taken the design and it has proportionally changed the design both vertically and horizontally and fit it inside my box. But as you can see, it's taken it and it's kind of shrunken it down a little bit where I've got some empty space at the top and I don't want empty space at the top because then it's not quilting the top of my quilt. So we need to move the design from down here up. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna start with our move feature and highlighting that here. And while we highlight that, we've got all of our move functions. We're gonna use this button here that is gonna take our design and move it all the way to the top of our box. When I hit that, our design is moved to the very tippy top of our box and now it's completed in everything that I wanted to do. We've repeated the design, we've scaled the design, and we've moved it to the location we want in our pattern box. But unfortunately, I've spent so much time doing this that it's time for me to leave for an appointment. And I don't have time to stitch this out right now. This is where save comes into play. We can go back to layout on our screen and highlight that and then come over to the right hand side of our screen and actually save this whole layout by using the little icon that looks like a disc with a pencil on it. If we hit that icon, we get a nice big keyboard and it says layout at the top where we can actually name this. I'm gonna name this Alice Quilt because that's what this is. It's an Alice in Wonderland quilt with that cute little fabric 
And as I'm typing my letters, it actually puts the letters up here. So it says Alice Quilt. And now that I have it saying that, I'm gonna hit the check mark. And it now says layout saved. And I don't know about you, but I'm a double checker. I always wanna make sure that it really did save what it says it saved. So what I'm gonna do before I turn my robot off is I'm gonna just double check by hitting my file and it says Alice Quilt right there. So I know that it's saved. So I can hit cancel and I can now turn off my unit because I know that it has saved this pattern as I laid it out here. And I'm gonna do that right here in front of you guys so that you know that I turned it off. You can see me, hello everybody, in the reflection on my display. I'm gonna turn it back on now so y'all can see us pull it back up we're gonna go back to that point of origin that we talked about earlier when we were setting our safe area. That's how everything's gonna get lined back up so that we can use that pattern as we designed it and sized it for our space. So my robot's coming back on and it's gonna bring our app back up. So we're gonna turn our app back on. And once we do that, we come back to our normal screen that we usually see, but we're not gonna set our safe area or our quilting area. We're gonna come over to our little file folder again and open that up and find what we named our quilt. So we named our quilt Alice Quilt. We're gonna highlight it with our finger and it put Alice Quilt down here in file name on the bottom of our screen. And we are gonna hit open. When we do that, our Butler Robotics tells us to move the machine to the quilt area origin and press okay. So you guys remember my point of origin was this little stitching line that I've got right here. I was at the very end stitch. So I'm gonna hover my needle over that very end stitch. You may have marked your quilt of, with a marking pencil or something to where your point of origin was, or maybe you don't set a safe area and you just set your quilt top so your point of origin could have been the corner of your quilt top. Everybody does it just a little bit different. There's no right or wrong way. So my point of origin is right here. I'm gonna hit my check mark on my screen now that I'm at my point of origin and it brings my design back up with my safe area and my pattern layout box. So this is exactly what I had before. And if you can see here, my crosshairs right now, they are at my point of origin. If I slide my crosshairs over and my needle over to the corner of my quilt, my crosshairs go to the very corner of my pattern layout box. If it's too hard to see here on this screen, I can toggle from my full layout to my single layout of just my pattern layout box. And you can see it right there. I'm on the corner of my design box and I am on the corner of my quilt. So I am now ready to stitch out. I brought it back up and I am ready to go. I can go to my home screen. I can engage my needle and I can hit my start button and I can go through my motions and get going. I hope that was helpful to everybody. You know, there are quite a few steps in all of it, but if you are someone who likes to set things up and get yourself going and then suddenly something pops up and you've got to go, using that save feature and coming back to your layout later is awful helpful to have. So I hope that answers the question for our friend out there on Facebook so that she knows how to do this and hopefully some more of you know how to do this now. It's a great way to do some work even late at night before you go to bed if you've just got that itch to do a little bit of designing on your quilt but you just don't have the time to stitch it out. Get some of your work done, go do something else and come back to it later. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You may have other thoughts on how to do the layouts differently. There may be methods that work for you a little bit better. There are different options. This is just how I like to do it. 
experiment and have a little bit of fun and find out what works for you. Thanks so much for joining me today and we will see you soon. Bye.